Carolyn Maloney is running for Congress in, in one of the newly redistricted districts in New York, I think. Or it might be her old district, but Jerry Nadler got put into it or something. It's it's a new it's a new district that encompasses both of their territory, but it's the majority Maloney's old turf. Yeah. Like they've never like she's an upper west side upper east side rep and he's a upper west side rep and they've never represented any of those areas. So now it's like both of them. It's a bloodbath for wealthy Democrats. Absolutely. Both of them are heavyweights in that area. And so they're running like pretty aggressively against one another and are trying to be as publicly facing as possible. And they were in a debate uh, recently, a primary debate. And Carol Maloney said something about how she doesn't think Biden's going to run for reelection. And Nadler was like, Oh, we don't know that. We don't know that. Yeah, he, they were asked all like, will like like will he run? Siraj Patel, who's like the perennial other candidate, was like he will definitely run. Nadler was like, I'm not really. He almost on that. won last year, though. We should mention. Patel yeah, yeah, no. really close last year. And this is like his third time running. So he's still going. Like, and then and then, but Maloney literally outright was like, I don't think he's gonna run. <laughs> so, so why I think this is interesting though is that if you know. This had happened in some sort of Republican primary and anyone had a pr like questioned Donald Trump running for reelection or something like that. And I understand Biden's numbers are worse than Trump were at this period. Um, it would be completely excommunicated excommunication. But there are still some disciplinary methods in the Democratic Party because she had to go on CNN and apologize basically for making that statement. Here it is. Alicia, I Mr. President, I apologize. I want you to run. I happen to think you won't be running, but when you run or if you run, I will be there 100%. You have deserved it. You are a great president and thank you for everything Is you've Joe done Biden for the my state and all the states and all the cities in America. Thank you, Mr. President. It's so bizarre. It's like that thing that we played the other week where Fox and friends were like, Mr. Trump, if you're watching, we don't believe the polls that say that you're unpopular. This is also like a classic like Bravo apology being like, I'm sorry if you were offended. Right. Like, like, like I'm not really sorry for saying it, but I'm sorry you took it the wrong way. Right. I'm, I'm still gonna include my speculation about <laughs> you not running again. <laughs> but I'm sorry your feelings were hurt by my statement. That's an accurate representation of my feelings on the matter. Um, I mean, I find this interesting one because like the way she's speaking to the camera is uh, dystopian. And second, one, two, it is interesting to know that there is still this weird cult stuff within the Democratic Party. Like it, the Republicans are worse by 100 percent times over, but there's still these power dynamics at play within the Democratic Party. And three, maybe he's not running again. And they, she has some inside knowledge. Dark Brandon came before her in a dream the night before. <laughs> I love Dark Brandon. <laughs> the ghost of, uh, of, of Biden in 2024 came you'll to her in a dream. On, you'll go on TV and apologize, Jack. <laughs> I, I find Come the on, Dark man. Brandon thing admittedly very confusing. It's, <laughs> it's become, it's, I've, I've said it before and I'll say it again, it, it's difficult on my own show when like Joe Biden is Dark Brandon and, and by implication i'm like light brandon it's just not what you'd expect it, you know from it's what transgressive come on, yeah, I, I like to break down you know binaries and all that but it's just like you know counterintuitive but i, I think it was a great apology the best i could have offered myself if i were you know there <laughs> the funny thing is if you watch the actual primary uh debate that third candidate that we were talking about earlier patel like they ask him if he thinks Biden would run and if would he support him? And he was like, yes to both. And when Maloney says, because he's he he isn't he doesn't run as like a progressive left wing challenger. He runs like an Obama. He calls himself an Obama Democrat, I believe. Um, and, but when uh, Maloney says that there's there's like a camera on Patel and he looks like absolutely like what? What's she knows something like she he looks shocked, like on the spot there on stage. Yeah, I mean, it is fascinating because I don't think we've ever seen this dynamic in modern history where, like, it seems like as of now, and a lot can change, polling indicates the Democratic voters are energized by the Roe v. Wade reversal, where enough so that it's not a complete bloodbath that's foretold for months on end um, in the midterms. And, and we don't know that for sure, obviously, but that despite this biden's approval rating is as worse as it as bad as it possibly could be for a democrat 
or, or for a president two years into his first term. I mean, again, Trump had higher numbers at this point. And and yet, like, there doesn't seem to be any movement on that front. And it seems fairly disconnected from Democrats' chances in the fall. Not completely disconnected, but more so than, say, you know, what happened in 2018. Can we just watch Patel's reaction from the original debate? Sure. Should President Biden run again in 2024? Yes. Mr. Nadler. Too early to say it doesn't serve the purpose of the Democratic Party to to deal with that until after the midterms. Ms. Maloney. I don't believe he's running for re-election. Hmm. Should President Biden <laughs> run again? Like Sorry, do flipped. that one more time, Bradley. I mean, she, he's breaking uh, she's breaking news there, if that's the case. And it is interesting. Note Nadler and Maloney's responses are different than Patel. And they're both in Congress right now. Like, they're both around the powers that be. So they might know something. Nadler had what Il- Ilhan's response was, which is, yeah, like this, it only suits, frankly, Republicans to be uh, talking about this, even though I would like a different candidate myself. Oh, my God. We'll get destroyed if Biden runs again. Unless Deal with Trump that. does. Go on. Yeah. Not until after the midterms. Ms. Maloney. I don't believe he's running for re-election. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know why... I don't know why that's so surprising to him, though, because like Biden was initially pitched as like the settling candidate. Yeah. Like that. Well, here is what people are settling on because they can sort of agree that he's not so offensive uh, and he has the quote unquote best chance to beat Donald Trump. The fact that some people have now mind flooded themselves into believing that everyone was super excited about him is a failure on their part. Like no one was super excited about Biden. I was there 18 months ago. So I remember. And so like this new kind of pivot that the hand like a handful of democratic sycophants are now going with like oh no yeah we always knew people were going to love biden biden was going to run again biden is like super unpopular he wasn't even popular when he was running to be honest you yeah. know like so this is just kind of an obvious thing i think the real problem is that the the you know the big kamala harris in the room in the sense that like they were kind of floating that she was going to be the like you know softball pitch to replace him but people still aren't feeling kamala ha- harris you know people still forget she's vice president all the time so i mean that kind of Unless puts they hate her back in Unless they hate her, which is not what you want. I think her approval rating is lower than most vice presidents in modern history. I mean, probably Dick Cheney towards the end of their second term had her beat. But if Bradley like looked that up, what some of her numbers are in terms of popularity, because it's pretty bad. She doesn't like, do her... question marks. Yeah, right. <laughs> a, like a question number. mark percentage. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm well, going to throw this out there. Maybe I'll be wrong, but I, this is what I think. I don't think Maloney or Nadler have any inside information. What I think is that they can, none of those three, uh, well, Patel seems very sure what would work out for him, but I think nobody is quite sure where the Democratic base is or even what the progressive wing of Democratic base is thinking about Biden and his reelection, if he should run again. Yes, there's polling, but people people seem to not like, you know, uh, Nadler and Maloney are probably trying to figure out, you know, we run as, you know, we are more centrist Democrats. Um do we want to win over progressives in this part of the uh, the uh, you know our our district here? So we'll we'll you know hedge here. Whereas Patel is completely one hundred percent establishing that he is what he calls himself the Obama Democrat. So of course, what would that uh, entail? That would be supporting Biden. I mean, Obama didn't even support Biden. <laughs> yeah, until he was he was already the the thing. So I mean, the real Obama Democrat position is the second guy's position, which is that like ah, it's a little too early to start throwing out names for who's going to be president. <laughs> I mean, come on, like it's only yeah. twenty twenty two. But no, I think you know this is going to sound like a joke, and that's because I'm joking. But this is also like serious in the sense that this is Hillary Clinton's last best chance to run for president. And so if okay. they're going to pull, if they're going to Put, you're, you're laughing because you think it's a joke and I, I kind of prefaced it with the fact that it was but it's also a, we're laughing a because <laughs> imagining such a reality is almost too painful yeah. to actually let it's our like, minds comprehend it's sort of like a grimaced laugh it's a defense the, mechanism 
because I don't know if they're going to actually have a primary. They might not even bother with the primary process if if things are going as bad as they look like they're going to be going with the inaction of the Democratic Party in 2024. But if they were, it'll just be like Kamala Harris versus Pete Buddha something versus uh, Joe Biden. And, you know, all you need is Hillary Clinton to kind of swoop, swoop in there and just like do a little bit of like three card Monty. And then suddenly she's pre- well, not president, but suddenly she's the Democratic nominee again. Brandon. Third time, third time's a charm. You know, if my choice you're fired, was between, Brandon. if you're, the, the choice was b- between uh, Hillary and uh, Buttigieg, honestly, I think uh, I think I would go Hillary. Don't say it. <sighs> no, I, I, we're moving off no. this topic. Yeah, no, I, I have one thing to say though. This isn't new. Um, Politico, uh, December eleventh, two thousand nineteen. According to four people who regularly talk to Biden, all of whom asked for anonymity to discuss his internal campaign matters. I mean, that's Politico for you. It is virtually inconceivable that he will run again for re-election in 2024 when he would be the first octogenarian president. If Biden is elected, a prominent advisor to the campaign said he's going to be 82 years old in four years and he won't be running for re-election. Okay. Well, I mean, that it's not confirmed that's the case. And it could be just Kamala staffers being close to Biden and leaking that to mm. Politico. You read everything in Politico has an agenda, and it's probably just to, like, lay some groundwork for him not to do so. President's keep getting older. So, I mean, what can I say? You know, he'd be the first, but he might not be the last. Octogenarian Trailblazer president. is an octogenarian. <laughs>